Hello guys, my name is Kirtan and welcome to my channel Physiology at Once. In this video, I will be talking about the topic leukopoiesis. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe because I will be uploading easy physiology videos which is easy to understand and you can replicate the same in your board examinations. For the notes, you can check the description below. I provided the link. So let's start. What is leukopoiesis? It is the development of the leukocytes. What are leukocytes? Leukocytes are nothing but WBCs and lymphocytes which, which play the main role in the immune system of our body. Let's talk about the stages of leukopoiesis. As I have discussed before, there are two types of pluripotent stem cells, committed stem cell and uncommitted pluripotent stem cell. The committed pluripotent stem cell again divides into myeloid stem cell and lymphoid stem cell. The myeloid stem cell is also called as the trilineage stem cell because it gives rise to again three types of progenitor cells. Those are granulocyte monocyte progenitor cell, erythroid progenitor cell, megakaryocyte progenitor cell. The granulocyte monocyte progenitor cell with the help of granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factor gives rise to the WBCs which are nothing but neutrophil, monocyte, eosinophil and basophil. The erythroid progenitor cell with the help of erythropoietin gives rise to the red cells. And the megakaryocyte progenitor cells gives rise to the platelets. The lymphoid stem cell again gives rise to prolymphocytes and it divides into B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, and natural killer cells in the bone marrow, thymus, and again bone marrow correspondingly. For easy understanding of this topic, let's see this flowchart. This is an important flowchart to remember to understand the topic thoroughly. The pluripotent stem cells gives rise to myeloid stem cell and lymphoid stem cell. The lymphoid stem cells gives rise to pre-T cells and pre-B cells which again gives rise to T cells and B cells correspondingly. The myeloid stem cells divides into colony forming units of erythrocytes, megakaryocytes and granulocyte monocyte cells. This again divides into two forms, colony forming units of granulocyte and colony forming units of monocyte. These are two separate lines. The colony forming units of granulocytes ultimately form the granulocyte cells which are nothing but neutrophil, eosinophil and basophil. Those are called granulocyte cells because they contain granules in their cytoplasm. The colony forming units of monocytes gives rise to monocyte cells which again divide into macrophage and dendritic cells in the tissues. The colony forming units form the blast cells in both the lines. From the blast cells they form the promyelocyte, then the myelocyte the metamyelocyte and ultimately the granulocyte or the monocyte in both the lines. You can remember this by B comes first. So the blast cells always comes first. Then comes C. So then it's promyelocyte. Myelocyte and metamyelocyte. Pro, myelo and meta. The first comes blast cells, then comes promyelocyte, then myelocyte, then metamyelocyte. If you remember this order you can easily remember this flowchart. So let's talk about some trends from above to below in this process. You can also remember the value if needed but the trends are more important and you should write this in the exam. The cell size gradually decreases from above to below. The exception is promyonocytes because its cell size is increased than the before stage. In the cytoplasm, granules gradually appears from above to below. The nuclear light disappears from above to below and it completely disappears at the myelocyte stage. The nucleus also decreases in size from above to below. Now let's talk about each step of development briefly. Steps of development Colony forming units They are the progenitor cells. They have the properties of stem cells and cannot be distinguished morphologically. Blast cells. They can be morphologically distinguished and they are large, the nucleus is also large and the nuclei, nuclei are multiple. The nuclei are prominent and are the main site of assembly of ribosomal proteins and rRNA. They are actively mitotic. Promyelocytes and promonocytes. The cytoplasm is granular, the nucleoli is less. The nucleus is round in shape and these are mitotic cells. Myelocytes. The nucleoside nucleus is round and concentric. The nucleoli is absent and this is the main point. The nucleoli is absent 
it and it shows only some degree of mitosis the characteristic feature the appearance of peroxide is negative specific granules even the peroxide is positive specific granules are present but due to the more number of peroxide is negative specific granules it is the dominant one metamyelocyte in this stage the cells stop dividing and there is no mitosis and they have mixed granules let's talk about the regulation of leukopoiesis interleukins interleukin 1 interleukin 6 and interleukin 3 helps to promote the maturation of stem cells interleukin 5 helps in development of the eosinophil cells interleukin 3 and interleukin 4 helps in development of the basophil cells and interleukin 2 inhibits the myelopoiesis process the colony stimulating factors granulocyte monocyte colony stimulating factors granulocyte colony stimulating factors and monocyte colony stimulating factors these are the factors which stimulate the process of leukopoiesis tumor necrosis factor even this promotes the process of leukopoiesis so that's it for today guys if you found this video informative please like share and comment and also subscribe for more videos like this thank you